guys, uh, it's Nikki here from Love of Dirt. Welcome back to another video. Um, today I'm going to show you my worm farm. So a couple of weeks ago, it's probably a couple of months ago now, I did a bit of an overhaul of our little shade house seed raising station and I mentioned I would show you inside our worm farm and so today's day. We basically have one worm farm now. Um, we used to have many um, but we found that this system has worked the best for us. Um, so basically what happened was um, we had a leak under our bathtub and we had to rip our bathtub off up inside our house and the plan was to do a renovation um, and get a new bathtub so I'm like okay let's make a worm farm um, so that's what we did when it comes to composting um, worm farming is probably one of the easiest the downside is they don't take as much waste so if you've got a lot of household waste like a regular family does then a worm farm is going to need to be supplemented by something else so you can't just give all your scraps and i think that that's probably the biggest problem with people in worm farms is they just chuck all of their kitchen scraps in they don't add any extra bedding and then they wonder why there's no worms in their worm farm so the key really for us here in the subtropics is to be able to protect them from the heat in summer. Um, so hence why it's in my shade house. Um, and the other thing that we do is make sure that we've got a lot of bedding. So we need at least about 20 centimeters. So they of depth and width so the worms can escape um, if it gets too hot or too cold. So they, they've got lots of places to go to. Um, so let's go have a look and check out how our worms are doing um, it is winter here at the moment so they're a bit slower than normal um, but let's go have a look okay so here is the worm farm so basically it is essentially a bathtub um, my husband's built a frame for it to sit in so it's up off the ground I've seen people just put besser blocks under them um, we've got a pot underneath that catches any leachate but a well-run system shouldn't have much anyway so it doesn't really do much it's just if perhaps um, there's been a lot of rain like we recently had it was actually coming in sideways so it was getting a little bit of extra moisture um, on top we have a couple of different things happening we've got corrugated iron which is protecting from rain because we're in a greenhouse it's there's no roof um, and we've got this on a hinge with a screen door and some rodent proof mesh there so that keeps all of those um, rodents out well attempts to anyway um, and a lot of the other bugs and things like that we still have cockroaches we still have all sorts of um, critters in here but it's part of the worm farm ecosystem so in here we have um, a drainage layer and then I've got this this geo fabric I did used to have um, some shade cloth this this one actually but I did find that the holes in it were making um, the castings drop down into the drainage layer which was clogging it um, so we only really found that out after we got the rain coming in sideways and there was water in here um, so we fixed that up <laughs> so basically I have harvested half of this worm farm so what I usually do is every sort of six months I try and migrate the worms to one side, um, usually whichever sides um, wasn't the la was the last collected, so to get them out of the, the finished castings. Um, so what I have actually just done a harvest and I filled up this side with, um, we've got bamboo leaves, we've got cardboard, there's all sorts of bedding in here. I have started feeding on this side. Um, so we try to feed um, it only every three days or once a week um, and I just give them the things that I know that they're gonna they're gonna chew through so they love fruit they love um, they absolutely love watermelon and they just eat that really really fast so on this side is the side that hasn't been harvested so there's more castings in here and I did pop in a watermelon just to show you how much they love it they'll all congregate over here I lift it up yeah there they all are so yeah they're loving the watermelon so they like that there um, so we feed by, by putting it in little pockets and making sure that there's always plenty of bedding so bedding is cardboard it's mulch it's stuff that can be food but is also not 
too acidic and too um basically it's your carbons that you normally put in your compost so we've got um we're just we've stopped feeding on this side now in the last um couple of weeks so but they're still all over here so what we'll do is we'll um migrate across so start feeding from this side and then by the time that um all of this bedding starts to resemble castings um then we'll we'll move back to this side and then it's basically a migration method of um, harvesting so this is what six months of harvesting of castings looks like um, and you'll notice um, I'll try and find a video of um, some castings that we used to get from our can of worms that we had um, but it is not a sloppy mess like this is this is how the castings should be so with those commercial systems what we found is the instructions are, are really wrong um, they tell you you need to put water in it um, but generally worms will get enough water from the food that give, you give them and also if you find that it is really hot or you live in a really dry climate you just wet the bedding before you put it in so when you're feeding and you're adding bedding with a feed um you you dampen it so what i'd usually do is i get a bucket of water and i rip up shred up all my um cardboard and newspaper and i put it in the bucket of water and then i put it in into my system i don't run watering cans full of water through it because they're going to drown it's not going to be pleasant <laughs> for the worms at all um and then this is the this is the castings you get so this um i haven't normally what i do is i sieve it um, to get all the chunks out because obviously they don't they don't process absolutely everything um, so in here I've got <laughs> there's actually clay beads from our aquaponics so I've obviously pulled something out with roots I've got that looks like a, a macadamia nut shell um, so there's still big chunks I've obviously put something in there that's had a string that hasn't um, broken down um, so I'll sieve that and Sometimes I put it straight back into the system, the things that are too big, or I'll just chuck it in a regular compost bin. But honestly, this stuff is magic. So, you know, if you're having a worm farm just to process um, waste, you're going to need a lot of them. Um, but if you're wanting a worm farm to better your garden, then, then that's probably more of a reason to have one. So there's a couple of ways you can use this. You can just put it straight on your garden. Um, but we like to really make it stretch by making a lot of um, worm, actively aerated worm casting tea. So we actually um, put it in a bucket and we um, aerate it with some other things that are going to increase the bacteria population. And then we use it as a foliar spray around our garden. Um, so they're the two ways you can do it. Um, but yeah, it is honestly, um, this, <laughs> this stuff is worth its weight in gold on the garden. It will just, yeah, if you've got a good system in place, um, replenishing your beds with um, this or even using it as the liquid fertilizer, um, foliar spray, um, your, your garden is really going to um, thrive with it. Another little tip is to have some eggshells and some lime in in a little shaker so we've just got repurposed this little spice um, shaker for our eggshells so we just blend them up and put it in so I, I give a sprinkling of this every time I feed um, so it just helps with the acidity levels keeps it all in balance and gives them a bit of grit for them to process the food a lot easier okay so just an example of about how much I feed them it's it's literally not much so this is probably about a cup of scraps um, and I feed them every three days or if not every week um, depending on how quickly they're going through the food so so usually um, they won't start eating this until it starts to break down because what they're actually eating is the bacteria um, so fresh stuff isn't going to get eaten straight away it's going to wait until it gets a bit yucky and gross before they will go to it um, so yeah it's one of the things that um, with worm farms is you really do need to make sure that you're watching what you're feeding them. Another little thing is they actually don't eat seeds. So if you 
put seeds in here they're likely going to germinate when you put them out in the garden so I try not to obviously this one this little rock melon has fallen through quality control um, but yeah uh, that's just another little tip they will sort of process things that are diseased um, anything that's got bugs and things like that it's actually um, they're quite good at removing all of that stuff it's just they won't process the seeds which is why the aerated tea is a really good option because you're not actually putting those seeds out into the garden directly but you're still getting the goodness of that um, vermicompost because this is all bedding at the moment because I've just cleared it out um, normally I would add extra as I feed them um, but because it is all bedding I'm just making a little hole and then just covering it up I will just put some sprinkles on those in um, and cover it up and that's me feeding my worms for the next three days um, but basically because they're not over here yet I've got sort of little pockets everywhere I'm probably gonna wait another week until I feed them again to be honest um, they're still getting through that watermelon that I had before um, so they've got plenty of food in here plenty of bedding they're gonna be fine so they'll probably won't get fed for uh, a week or so now so yes we do get critters um, don't be scared about other bugs in your worm farm so that's a little spider there um, we often get cockroaches in here but there's also geckos that get in here to eat the cockroaches sometimes the spiders are a lot bigger than that <laughs> which can be a little bit um, scary um, but yeah most of the time um, there's lots of little guys in here and they're all part of the system so don't be afraid so if you don't need to renovate your bathroom and can't get access to a bathtub um, and aren't really you're not really handy um, the systems that I would recommend are if you want to buy one commercially is a CFT or a continuous flow through system um, there's a couple of options on the market I'm not sponsored or affiliated at all um, locally if you're in southeast Queensland there's worms down under um, and then there's a New Zealand brand called the hungry bin so those two options are really really good I would definitely invest in those over the traditional can of worm ones that you find um, at nurseries and things like that just because they are so much easier to harvest from and they are hands off um, you're not having to worry about worms um, running away because they're uncomfortable which is what happens with those um, those little plastic um, stacking systems if you want to know more about worm farming um, I do have an ebook on my website I'll put a link down below um, I also have loads and loads of video resources on fixing up the old can of worm systems and how to, to use those more efficiently um, inside our membership at dirtlovers.com.au um, and I'll pop a link down below to that as well so if you like this video please make sure that you like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time bye